Welcome to, to the Seattle Area Independent Schools Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jessica and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. First, know that your camera and your microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to presenters at any time during the presentation. This is one of the many sessions that have happened for the college fair. So please go back to the website to check out the recording of this presentation, as well as others. They'll be available soon at strivescan.com forward slash SAIS. So next, I'd like to turn it over to Melanie to give us a welcome. Thanks, Jessica. And Thanks for your work all day. On behalf of StriveScan, uh, you're great partners in this program. I'm Melanie Reed, Director of College Advising at Seattle Academy and a proud member of a team that includes Misa Kabashima, Dave Thomas, and Mike Walden. Before we start today, I just wanna give a welcome and thanks on behalf of our partner schools in SAIS. Um, and there are many of us, so I'm just gonna tell you who's part of this event today. You might be associated with Rainier Scholars, with our friends in Tacoma, Annie Wright and Charles Wright, or our friends here in Seattle, who are the Bush School, the Downtown School, Eastside Prep, Forest Ridge, Lakeside Northwest, Overlake, and University Prep. The fun of this complex job is having partners like the folks I just mentioned uh, with whom to work, not to mention partners in colleges like the people you'll meet today. So I'll close by saying many, many thanks during a very busy and complicated time to our college partners who are here to present today. Uh, I also will just put in a plug, listen to your college advisor. You have great uh, support and really knowledgeable people at all of your schools and programs uh, who are also friends of mine. So you're in good hands, please trust them and have a great year. Thanks. Back to Jessica. Thank you, Melanie. So first up, we have the University of Washington. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you to everyone for being here today. I will get started. I know we have a lot to cover in a very short amount of time. All right, so we are the University of Washington. I'm sure that many of you have been to our campus before and you may even have family members, older siblings that have attended the UW. But just to get started, I do want to share that I will be covering information specifically retaining, uh, pertaining to the Seattle campus of the University of Washington. If you have questions about Tacoma or Bothell, feel free to reach out to their admissions offices directly. So the University of Washington is a large public research institution. On this slide, you'll see some of the things that you will have the opportunity to take advantage of at the UW. You have more than 180 majors, 900 student organizations, 70% of students live on our campus, although it's not a requirement for freshmen, and 94% of our freshmen return for their sophomore year. I do also wanna note if you are interested in research, the UW is a wonderful place to get involved with research as early as your freshman year. And we do receive more federal research funding than any other public institution in the US. Here are a few of the top employers of the University of Washington. Some of these companies will likely look familiar to you. So at the University of Washington, we're proud in our preparation for students and their career and internship preparation. And we do have a career services center on our campus that will help you with resume review, mock internship preparation, and make sure that you're really taking those next steps to get that experience outside of the classroom as well. So to talk a little bit more about our application checklist, we are members of the coalition application, which is a shared application platform. There are more than 150 colleges across the US that use that application. In order to apply to the UW, you'll submit your coalition application and your application fee. It's $80 for US applicants and $90 for international students. And we do not require test scores at the University of Washington. And so we are test optional and you can find out more about our testing policy on our website. But if you do not have test scores that will not negatively impact you in the review of your application. At the UW, we complete a holistic review of your application. And we think of that review as um, academic preparation and performance and personal characteristics and achievements. So really looking at the full context of your application and digging into your academics as well as how you will contribute to our campus as well. 
September 1st is when the coalition application will be open to you. Those of you that may be juniors, that'll open for you September 1st next year. And that's when the UW specific section of the application opens. The coalition application is always open. So seniors, everything you need to apply to the University of Washington is open for you now. And we would encourage you to start your application as soon as possible. We do not participate in early action or early decision at the UW. Our application deadline is November 15th, and that is fairly early in your senior year. So we want to make sure that you are applying prior to November 15th so we can consider you for admission for autumn 2022. And the final slide is my contact information. Like I said, I know we had a short amount of time together to talk about the University of Washington, but if you have any questions, you are welcome to reach out to me directly. I will be your point of contact at the UW and I'm here to answer some questions as well in the chat. And my colleague, Joe Franco will be in there answering questions as well. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, so next up we have Southwestern University. Awesome. Hello and good afternoon. Um, I am going to head and share my screen. Um, I have some PowerPoint information um, just so that we are all seeing uh, the beautiful campus that we have. Um, and so I am here from Southwestern University. Um, we are a small school located in Georgetown, Texas. Um, so some fast facts for you. We were the first school in the state of Texas founded in 1840. We're only 1,511 students, undergraduate only. So very, very much an intentionally small community, um, kind of the antithesis of who we just heard from, which is great that there's lots of options here for you today. We have 37 different majors, 41 minors. As you can see, our average class size is gonna be about 16 students and about 75% of our classes are gonna be 25 students or less. We do have a 100% renewable energy campus and the city of Georgetown where we're located is also 100% renewable energy. And we are one of the two colleges that change lives in the state of Texas. Important to know a little bit about Georgetown since you may have never heard of us. Um, we are a fast growing city in central Texas about 28 miles north of downtown Austin. A um, lot, of, lot of opportunity for outdoor recreation, beautiful town square. Um, and if you are a fan of the heat, it's currently 97 degrees here and we would love to have you come join us. I will be in Seattle next week and I am looking forward to your weather. Um, and so we would be glad if you are a, a heat seeker for, to you come join us in Texas. When we look at our curriculum at uh, Southwestern, we have a lot of flexibility. Our students are required to pick a major by the end of their sophomore year. And so you do have the opportunity here to spend about a third of your time in that major. A third of your time will be in general education, as you can see listed out here, the, the different areas that we ask you to participate in. And then we leave a third of your curriculum entirely open-ended for the opportunity for you to fill in as you'd like. Some students choose to do a double major, other students choose to do minor, pre-professional programs, or just take classes that make sense to them that work out to cover their academic interests. We also have a lot of opportunity for um, applying your knowledge and high impact experiences. As you can see, lots of study abroad opportunities in over 22 different countries. We also have two study away opportunities, one in Washington DC and one in New York City. So if you'd like to hit the third coast of the United States, we welcome you to do that as a member of our community. Um, we have lots of opportunity for community service and community engaged learning. Academic internships are huge for our students and we encourage them both here in the Central Texas region, but also across the country and the world. And 100% of our students will do a capstone or similar culminating project, as well as a lot of our students participating in research and opportunities for creative projects with our faculty. Because we are so small and undergraduate only that we don't have our compete for those opportunities across. About 80% of our students live on campus all four years, and we are we do require two years of residency for the first two years. And that means that we really are a tight knit community. We have over 100 student clubs and organizations, which leads to a 15 to one student to club ratio. So I'm sure they have something that would be exciting to you. We have a lot of opportunity in our School of Fine Arts for students to study or just to participate. And all fine arts events are free for any student, regardless of your academic choices. 
We have 20 Division Three athletic sports. So if you are interested in playing a sport for us, you are welcome to reach out to coaches now and get in touch with them wherever you are in your college search process. And then we also have 24 intramural sports. So about 65% uh, of our students participate in some kind of athletic pursuit when you add those two programs together. And finally, about a third of our students participate in national sororities and fraternities on campus. When we look at our profile, we're just over 51% female. Um, so just that smidge bit there. And then we also are gonna see about 15% of our students coming from outside the United States or outside of the state of Texas. If you are not familiar with the state of Texas, I will remind you, you can drive 14 hours and still be in the state of Texas. Um, you may think Washington is a very large state, but you have yet to meet Texas, um, which is an even larger state. And so while we do come from a very diverse area, a lot of our students do hold the same driver's license. 41% of our students come from underrepresented backgrounds in higher education, and about 17% are the first in their families to attend college. We have four different application types. So we will take our own Southwestern application. We have a common app situation in Texas called the Apply Texas application where you can use for any school in the state. We also accept the coalition application. So if you're working on that for UW, we'd be happy to accept that. And then we also accept the common application. We don't have preferential on whichever you would like to complete. So whatever is easiest for you is great for us. We have three deadlines. Our deadlines are gonna be the first Tuesday of each month. You'll see early decision is in November, early action is in December, regular decision falls in February. We do our best to get answers out within about three to four weeks after the application has come complete, but we do reserve the right to take a little longer if we need to. As your personal admission counselor, it is my job to do the best I can to get you an answer as fast as I can. When we look at your application itself, the very first thing we look at is transcript. It's my job to get to know your high schools and understand what it means to be a student wherever you're attending. We will next need a recommendation letter from either a school counselor or an academic teacher, just one required. You're welcome to submit additional if you would like. We will require the one essay from the Common App, the Coalition App, or our own application. And then we also have great opportunities for testing if you are choosing to submit that. Just really quickly, I know I have like 10 seconds left. Um, we have got uh, cost of attendance, our new scholarship model, which is available on our website if you'd like to look at more details, great opportunities for career services, and some great things that are happening here at Southwestern. So I encourage you to continue thinking about us. And as I mentioned, I'll be in Seattle next week. So if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. All right, thank you so much. So next up, we have University of Laverne. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Reinhardt. I'm with the University of Laverne Admissions Office. Uh, thank you so much for spending part of your afternoon with us. And then thank you uh, to the other presenters as well um, for, for sharing on your schools as well. It's been some great information so far. Not sure if you can see my screen yet. Give me one moment here. Um, I will start on the, uh, um, as far as talking points for the presentation goes while I look for that. Uh, at the University of Laverne, we're about 35 miles east of Los Angeles. I always like to kind of start with just where we are location-wise. Um, we're kind of about, about a half hour from Orange County, and we're about five minutes from the Claremont Colleges. So if you're familiar with the Southern California area, uh, if you have family in that area, that's kind of where we are, are located at. Um, our undergraduate population is currently about 2,500 undergraduate students at the University of Laverne. Um, a big thing about us is as far as majors are concerned, we offer about 40 different majors, but we actually don't, uh, we don't push majors too much on incoming freshmen. Uh, about 68% of our incoming uh, freshmen actually don't declare a major, and uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's not something that, that we do push upon them. Uh, once students do declare a major, business is generally our most popular major at the university. Um, and then some other popular ones are kinesiology, um, any of the uh, sciences, biology, uh, some behavioral sciences, psychology, sociology. Um, those are, are pretty popular majors at the University of Laverne. We also have a performance scholarship. Um, that we do with across six disciplines. Uh, we actually do that in music, art, theater, photography, uh, communications, and speech and debate. So those are, are really uh, popular 
uh, majors as well. Um, it was mentioned in the earlier presentation, but I, I uh, it was one of the other schools, but I think it's a very important uh, important point to, to, to include. Uh, the career services option. So once you are um, have a major, there is that career services element to, to help you with internships, um, to help you with, with, uh, with job trends and so forth for your particular major. Um, so that's a really popular service that we offer students as well. Uh, we don't require the students to live on campus. Uh, we're about 50-50, so about 50% of our freshman class uh, live on campus. The other 50% um, either commute or they're in off-campus apartments. So it is uh, there's no residency requirement with that. Uh, we do have three residence halls on campus, though. Uh, one of them we devote entirely to our incoming freshman class um, as far as that's concerned. Um, and, and that seems to be a pretty uh, popular option as far as that goes. Financial aid, um, obviously a big factor with any schools. Uh, we do what are called merit-based scholarships here at the University of Laverne. Uh, those merit-based scholarships can go anywhere from 15,000 as kind of a, a baseline model all the way up to $30,000 a year. Uh, those are non-need scholarships. So we're not looking at FAFSA information. Uh, or anything like that. That's just a academic scholarships for your grades at your particular school that you attend. Uh, we go off of a nine through 12 weighted GPA uh, for that scholarship. Um, in addition to academic scholarships, uh, there are, uh, especially for out of state students, there are uh, grants uh, or institutional scholarships to help offset the cost as well. And we also uh, have done a housing scholarship uh, for students that have indicated they want to live on campus. Uh, we've been offering housing scholarships to help pay for the cost of living on campus as well. Um, we're a little bit different on the application deadline. Uh, our application deadline is not until February 1st. So we are a, a school that is on what is called rolling admission. Uh, so with that, we, uh, we have a preferred deadline of February 1st. Um, if a student submits a, uh, their application past that deadline, we'll still work with that student. They won't be penalized um, and they'll still get a, a decision, I would say, probably within 10 to 14 days um, as far as that goes. We're going to start reading here uh, in about uh, Mid-October, so about the next uh, next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll start reading for the incoming freshman class. But again, we're on a rolling admission basis as far as that goes. Uh, and uh, summarizing or in closing here, um, as far as the application checklist, we are a member of the common application. So if you are looking to apply, um, you actually have two choices. There's a Laverne application as well as the common application. Uh, again, a February 1st deadline. Uh, we're test optional. Um, only 7% of our incoming class last year uh, submitted an SAT or an ACT score. So we are a test optional campus. And we only require one letter of recommendation. Um, and then those are the, uh, the really the main components we need for your application. Um, for transcripts, we can take unofficial transcripts at the time of admission. Um, so uh, if you or your counselor submit an unofficial transcript, we will be able to evaluate that for admission purposes, and then ultimately we'll ask for a final official transcript um, as well. Uh, my colleague Kyle is uh, on his way up to Seattle as we speak. I think he's in flight, so uh, he's going to be spending a few weeks up there. Um, I know he's really excited about it. I know it's, it's his favorite um, area to uh, to recruit. So uh, I wish you all best of luck in your college search for the upcoming year. Thank you, Matt. Um, so next up, we have Lawrence University. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Johnson, he, him, his pronouns. I'm an Associate Dean of Admissions here at Lawrence University, uh, and I'm excited to share a little bit more about our campus with you. Uh, Lawrence is a small college and conservatory of music located in Appleton, Wisconsin, the fifth largest city in Wisconsin with a metro population of over 250,000 people. So that means Appleton is gonna have a small town feel, 
but you still get big city resources and amenities. We have an airport in town. We've got internship opportunities, public transit, coffee shops, restaurants, museums, trails, a farmer's market, and even a performing arts center that brings in Broadway touring productions like Dear Evan Hansen this upcoming year. So let's dive in and learn a little bit more about our campus. Lawrence is unique in that we are both a nationally ranked College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and a conservatory of music. Between the two, we offer over 64 areas of study and that includes the option of pursuing a five-year double degree program where you spend half your time in the college and half your time at the conservatory earning two degrees, a BA and a Bachelor of Music. It's the only program of its kind from an entirely undergraduate college and conservatory in the nation. Now, in our academic model of instruction, Lawrence students are challenged and nurtured through individualized experiences with professors. Thanks in part to our eight to one student to faculty ratio, one of the smallest in the nation. And that's not just some random stat that I pulled from our brochures. It's also the lived reality of our students. Over 60% of our classes are one student and one professor. The students who are coming to Lawrence are inherently curious. They're creative, welcoming, engaged, and passionate about what they do, just like our faculty. Um, our faculty are, are not just engaged in their own research and, and areas of interest, but also in their own ideas and perspectives in mentorship and working with our undergraduates. It's not uncommon to be invited to your professor's house for dinner in the evening with your class uh, or to co-present with your faculty research advisor at a local conference. Now the academic curriculum at Lawrence is bookended by two quintessential scholarly experiences. We have first year studies and the senior experience. First year studies is our expansive introduction to what the liberal arts is all about. We have an intro to our honor code here at Lawrence. There's a shared syllabus of works ranging from Plato's The Republic to Alison Bechdel's Fun Home, Family Tragic Comic, Miles Davis's Kind of Blue, even the Bhagavad Gita, to help prepare Laurentians to think, read, and write critically, to analyze and synthesize, to debate and communicate across a wide variety of disciplines. The senior experience is then the culmination of your time at Lawrence. Every graduating senior produces some kind of significant work, an independent or collaborative research project, uh, an art exhibition, a scholarly paper, a senior recital, whatever it is, the point is that you're sharing your experiences and your expertise, your light with the world around you. Your Lawrence academic journey doesn't just prepare you for a career or for a job, but for a rapidly changing more increasingly globalized society that we're all a part of, um, not just for that first job, but the next one. So it's no coincidence that 97% of our graduates within six months of graduation have found their next step. Lawrence is also a fully residential community with nearly 100% of our students living on campus for all four or five years for the double degree students. With NCAA Division III athletics, 14 world-class music ensembles that are open by audition, opera theater and theater productions, plus 150 plus clubs and organizations, a student run campus garden, and even the world's longest running trivia contest. If there's a passion you wanna pursue in college, you're gonna find it here at Lawrence. In addition to our residential campus in Appleton, Lawrence also boasts two satellite campuses. Pictured here is Bjorklinden, our lodge and 441 acre estate up on the shores of Lake Michigan. It's an hour and a half north of campus, and it's basically a weekend retreat center for our students. We also have our third campus, the London Center, in the heart of London, right in the center of Bloomsbury. It's the most popular of our 50 study abroad programs. 40% of Laurentians will study abroad during their time here, and it's very easy to fit in a study abroad program, even if you're a STEM major or if you're a student athlete, because we're on a trimester system. So being gone for one term means you're still here for two thirds of the year. And if you're looking for a community that's already, already rich in diverse perspectives, you'll also find that at Lawrence. 30% of our Laurentians are students of color. 25% of our student body are the first in their family to go to college. And over 15% of our students come to us from 50 plus countries and nationalities around the world. That makes Lawrence one of the most geographically diverse small liberal arts colleges or conservatories in the nation. So what's the next step? If you're just getting started with the college search, I encourage you to tour our stunning campus for yourself. Take that plane trip out to Appleton, Wisconsin uh, and pick up your free Lawrence t-shirt along the way. If you're a senior, it's time to add us on the common application or the Lawrence application on our website. 
It's free to apply to Lawrence. There's no application fee. And we've been test optional since 2006. So one of the first schools to go test optional. We offer multiple deadlines, as you can see, to fit your busy senior year schedule. Um, and we also have generous financial aid policies. Merit scholarships, which you're automatically considered for, range between $18,000 and $31,000 a year for four years. And over half of our students receive need-based grants. We meet the full demonstrated need of over 90% of our student body. And we've raised the funds to become a full need institution in the next four years. Don't forget about me, trustee admissions counselor. I'm based regionally here in Portland, Oregon. I put you at the center of everything that I do. Feel free to get in touch with me if you have questions about Lawrence or the admissions process. And with that, I'll pass it to our next institution. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so next up, we have Georgia Institute of Technology. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to share a bit about Georgia Tech with you in these next few minutes. Um, so my name is Ashley Brookshire, and I am Georgia Tech's Regional Director of Admission for the West Coast. I'm actually based in California. I'm a tech alumna uh, and have been out here on the West Coast for the last seven years, but have been in admissions total for about 11 with Georgia Tech. So all that to say, I'm here to serve as a resource for you. I'll put my contact information in the chat, and I would certainly love for you to reach out to me if you ever have any questions about Georgia Tech that I may can maybe help to answer for you. But starting kind of big picture with Georgia Tech, we're in that mid to large size public university category with right around 16,500 undergraduate students. And while we are public, about 40% of our students come to us from out of state. So we actually have a really sizable out of state group. Our students are pretty concentrated in terms of what they want to study. We only offer 36 majors and that's intentional. We want to make sure we're educating students in fields where there's a real demand for that skill set. And also that we're able to offer novel programs. We don't want to just duplicate something that's already out there and available. Uh, probably unsurprisingly to you, given that Institute of Technology is in our name, uh, most of our students are studying STEM fields. Our colleges of engineering, computing, and sciences are by far our largest and make up about 84% of our undergraduate students. We have intentionally smaller programs in areas like business, design, as well as liberal arts. And it's really common to see students pursue minors or coursework and things very different from their major at Georgia Tech. So if you're looking to major in computing, and minor in business or major in engineering and minor in international affairs, absolutely, you'd be in good company doing that at Tech. Now, I know if you have attended college visits before, or maybe the first four folks who spoke ahead of me is, is your first dose of this, but um, most colleges have study abroad and research and internship. So I'm certainly not trying to tell you that Georgia Tech is unique in offering them. Everyone offers them. What I think is unique is the depth and breadth of these opportunities, especially um, when you look at us uh, in the context of educating so many STEM students. So for example, with study abroad, national average for public universities is that about 17% of students study abroad, but at Georgia Tech, 54% of our students are studying abroad. There's some big reasons for that. We have over 160 different programs, so you certainly have a lot of variety to choose from. All of our majors are represented abroad. So you can go and study abroad and get a really cool different cultural experience and still take your engineering and computing coursework if those are your majors. And then lastly, for out-of-state students, you'll pay closer to in-state tuition. And so we do try to make it a really financially feasible option. Um, when it comes to internships and co-ops, uh, we've really got you covered. Um, about 80% of our students will do one or the other while they're with us. Internships being just a one semester commitment. Our co-op program is where you are committing to working with the same company for a total of three semesters. Not three semesters in a row. We don't want you checked out of the student experience for that long. It's gonna be dispersed throughout your undergraduate career. And during those full-time work semesters, you are earning a paycheck, but you are not paying anything to Georgia Tech. And then lastly, research is kind of our bread and butter, whether you're looking to stay in academia, do research on your own, um, work with our graduate students, with faculty, with our research staff. Again, it's available in a variety of ways. We also have a lot of entrepreneurial support that kind of stems out of that research. And so if you're starting to develop a program product process on our campus, we absolutely want to have mechanisms in place to, to give you that opportunity. And when you look at the fact that again, 54% study abroad, 80% are getting a work experience and about 50% are doing research or entrepreneurship support in some capacity, these are not mutually exclusive of one another. Um, they're highly accessible and you're gonna be really hard pressed to find a Georgia Tech student on our campus who isn't engaged in at least one of these. We also love our setting. We're a very traditional 400 acre campus plopped in Atlanta. 
one of the benefits of being founded in the late 1800s is that Atlanta didn't really exist at that time. And so we were able to, to create our campus, kind of grow in that space, and we really still have that footprint and community feel, even though now we're surrounded by skyscrapers. And Atlanta's a tremendous asset for us, certainly when it comes to business. Atlanta's one of the top cities in the nation for Fortune 500 company headquarters, but it's also a really fun place to be. There's always some kind of concert show, festival game event happening off campus, and our students take advantage of that. We're also only about 20 minutes north of the busiest airport in the world, Hartsville Jackson International Airport. So getting to Atlanta and then up the campus from Atlanta is pretty streamlined. Just a bit on admissions, we do have a holistic review process. So we're gonna look at a variety of factors when you apply, um, but it is really competitive. And, and I do wanna be um, really clear about that. Um, our out of state admit rate last year was about 15%. Um, we bring in about 3,450 first year students each year. Um, but last year we had about 45,000 students apply to be in that fewer than 3,500 student first year class. Um, most folks have talked about these pieces so far, so I don't want to repeat anything you've already heard, but I do need to talk about testing. Um, as you've heard me mention, we are a public university, and so some of our policies are set at the state level. Um, right now, Georgia universities do have to have a test score on file, and so we do need an SAT or ACT score to complete your file. It can be self-reported, and it by no means is the most important factor that we're going to consider. Last year, when we were able to be test optional, when we looked at students who chose to have test scores in their file for, say, the SAT, um, the admitted students had a range of about an 1,100 to a 1,600 on that SAT. So again, we need it to complete your file. It is by no means one of the most important things that we're going to be considering, though. And then we're a school that has uh, early action and regular decisions. Specifically, you would be looking at early action two, which is non-binding, non-restrictive. And if you have any additional questions about these deadlines or anything about Georgia Tech, um, I'm happy to connect with you. And like I said, I will put my contact information in the chat. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, so next up, we have Wake Forest University. Hi everyone, my name is Nikki McIntyre. I am an Associate Dean of Admissions at Wake Forest University. Um, I'm so excited to be able to talk to students in Seattle area today. So hopefully this will give you a quick overview of Wake Forest, but I welcome your questions um, if there are any afterwards. So um, first off, I'm just showing you a lovely picture of our campus. It's a very green kind of typical American campus. Um, I think students really want that kind of traditional campus where you live, eat, work, play, and have classes. Everything is, Wake Forest is, um, the heart of it is that campus experience, but we also have so much more to offer our students um, that I'll be happy to share with you today. So Wake Forest is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'll talk a little bit more about Winston-Salem, but you should know that it's about a half or a half hour from the mountains and about three hours from the beach. So we have a lot of nice um, uh, nature to offer our students. Uh, we have 5,000, about 5,500 undergraduates. Total population is 7,500. So most of our students are undergraduates. So everything I showed you on that map before is really built around that undergraduate experience. So that's really important to note about Wake Forest. Very few top 30 universities have such an influence or have such an emphasis on um, the undergraduate experience. Winston-Salem, like I said, it's, it's probably not a place you've heard of, but it is a city of about 250,000 people. Uh, students love Winston-Salem. We have a really good coffee culture, and I hate to say that because I know my audience, because I know you guys will know coffee here, but in Winston-Salem, we have a great coffee culture, and students love the culinary offerings as well as some of the cultural offerings. We have a lot of uh, music and art and a lot of public art, uh, but Winston-Salem is, is definitely a cute little city um, that is certainly different than kind of a traditional bigger city, but has some of the benefits of a bigger city. The thing I love about most about Wake Forest is that it is kind of the best of both worlds of college. In the U.S., we kind of have small liberal arts colleges and big research universities. Wake Forest has the best of both worlds. In some ways, we are very much like a small liberal arts college. At Wake Forest, this is a traditional classroom. We're usually around a table. Professors get to know your name, your interests. They get to participate in your research. Um, and so this is what you can expect from day one. We actually do not have any lecture halls at Wake Forest. So this kind of around the table um, uh, style learning and discussion is how we do the classroom. We are a liberal arts university, which means you will have to take all different types of courses. Um, you are allowed to find that major your, and declare it your second year at Wake Forest, but you do have to take all different types of courses in order to graduate. So we're looking for those students who who value those connections that you can make between disciplines and really look at, uh, at education in this broad, exciting way. 
Another way we're like a small liberal arts college is we actually have um, a residential campus where students have to live for three years, but we have guaranteed housing for four years. So you can imagine the community that's built through our housing experience. Students really enjoy um, getting to know their peers and, and getting to have that four year kind of traditional college experience. And the, the community and the residence life is a big part of that. This is a full list of majors and minors. And I just wanna say quickly that 89% of our students double major or double minor. So you can do a psychology major with a music minor or a math major and a journalism minor. There's all sorts of strange, weird, wonderful combinations that Wake Foresters find. And so um, I encourage you to, to find your own combination and not be confined to just one course of study. When you apply to Wake Forest, we do ask what you wanna major in, but all students technically come in undecided so that they have those two years to figure out what they wanna major in. I mentioned that the heart of Wake Forest is that, that campus experience, but we also have a center downtown where you see the at sign that is our medical school. It is designed intentionally to be next to our undergraduate facilities. So students have access to um, the libraries and the faculty and the lectures and the internships of the med school. Um, and that's very rare in American higher education. And then we also have an engineering program downtown and that's one of our newer programs. It is the general engineering program. So you don't focus on a specific field of engineering but instead get a broad overview. Three of the four founding members of that program were women, um, and now we have 45% of our of the program or, or the students are women, and so there's nice gender parity when the national average is 17%. Another way we're like a research university is that we offer amazing research opportunities for our students. Um, we have a center called Eureka, the Undergraduate Research and Creative Activity Center. 100% of Wake Forest professors involve undergraduates in their research. So it's not rare to have a class that really inspires you, get attached to a research project and stay with that professor to help with that project and even go and present, at that, pro present that project at national conferences. So if you're eager to dive into that research question or discover a research question, there's lots of support, whether that's financial support, um, mentorship support from faculty, but we've had a Rhodes Scholar graduate from Wake Forest about once every two years. So we're really proud of how our students are able to push themselves intellectually through their research and classwork at Wake Forest. Study abroad is not a rare thing at any university, but it is at Wake Forest. 80% of students study abroad at Wake Forest. So that's, um, we're ranked fourth in the country for students that study abroad. It's a big part of our culture. Um, we own homes in these European cities, Venice, London, and Vienna. But we have programs in over 98 countries. We also have two study away programs. These are internship programs. You take in, or you do internships during the day in these cities, but then take Wake Forest classes in the evenings. So if you wanted that internship with that tech industry, you would go to Wake West program, have that internship during the day, but also be able to take classes at Wake Forest at night. In Washington, DC, we have a center in DuPont Circle that helps um, give students that direct access to the political landscape of DC while also having that kind of typical Wake Forest experience. So these are two really great programs that our students enjoy and give themselves a kind of uh, footstep into their careers. We are an ACC Division I school. We're one of the smallest, which means that we have to be loud and mighty, um, but we're very proud of our Demon Deacons. And lastly, I'll just kind of switch ahead and say, SAT for us is not very important. We were the first top 30 institution to go SAT optional. So we really care about you and your voice in this process. And I just encourage you to look at the dates so that you know which round is best for you to apply. All right, thank you, Nikki. Um, if I could have all our presenters to come back on the screen, that would be great. We have a few more uh, minutes in the session. I would love to ask you a few questions that you can answer out to the, to the crowd. Um, so the first question I would love to ask is, um, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll answer in the same order we presented. Great, thank you, Jessica. And that's such a good question, especially to be asking right now, as we know so many seniors are working their way through that college search process. So I would tell students to get organized and stay organized. There, as you have heard today from a lot of us, we all have different requirements and application deadlines. So help yourself out by finding an organizational method that works for you and continue with that method throughout the entire search process. Wonderful. I would echo that. And I would also say breathe. Um, I think this process can be really stressful and really hard. And each of you will find a college. It will be the right college for you. Um, and it is not, there's not only one college out there for every student. So you just heard from six amazing schools and we could be your right fit. And there's lots of others that are out there too. So take that deep breath and know that you're going to be okay. 
Absolutely, as uh, both of my colleagues made great points. Um, I would just say visit if you can. I know one of the representatives was talking about visit. I know sometimes that's always uh, not possible uh, from a financial standpoint and other considerations. Um, but if you can do an on-campus visit with the schools you're looking at, um, and if the on-campus doesn't lend itself even a virtual, any type of virtual visit um, to see the school get acclimated to the school and, and see if it's a possible fit. My advice, I, I'm gonna go a little bit of a different direction. Um, I, I think that when you're searching for colleges, looking at this sphere of, of higher education that we all live in and work in and, and support students in, I think the last year and a half, there's been an awakening of the fact that this is a space that has historically excluded so many students from access to higher education. Um, so my challenge and advice is in your college search, go ask those questions into an interview, into an email to your admissions officer, ask them what they are doing on their team in their admissions office at their institution for their students to become an actively anti-racist institution. Um, I think that's something that is so important to all of us. And I know it's important to students and higher education has to change. It has to serve all students. I think um, you guys have gotten some really amazing and sound advice and wisdom so far. Um, I think my advice would be to hold on to the things that, that you can control and focus on that in this process, but there's a lot that's completely out of your control and stressing about who else is in our applicant pool or your grades that you earned in ninth and 10th grade, right? Those things are, are done, they can't be changed or they are completely out of your wheelhouse, but you can control how you represent your activities. You can control the essays you write and how you're meeting deadlines and the types of questions you're asking schools. And so I think focus on the things you control, try to let go of the things you can't um, and don't waste your energy in directions that are fruitless. I think I have a bit of unique advice, but my colleagues have given such wonderful advice. Um, but I think that there's such pressure for students to focus on being unique. And I don't think that's a helpful way to look at college applications. I think instead, focus on being authentic and approach this college application process as a, a way of understanding yourself better, understanding your values, understanding what's important to you and how you want to grow intellectually. And so I think if you focus on how can I stand out, that's just going to put a lot of undue pressure on yourselves. And so I think instead, focus on who you are and authentic and I promise it'll read really well on our end of the desk. Students, I hope you're listening. Okay, so the next question um, is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? Same order. That is a hard question. There's so many things that I want students to remember about the University of Washington, especially because many of them are so close to us. But I think just Remember that the University of Washington is a really good fit for a lot of Washington state residents. And through our application process, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there about the UW. So I would encourage you to reach out if you have any questions, we are here to help. And we want to make sure that we can enroll some of our most promising Washington students at the University of Washington. Wonderful. Um, I would say remembering that we are a, a small caring institution, um, that Texas is not as scary as some of you may think it is. Um, I am from one of the coasts myself and moved to Texas and it's a great spot. Um, Central Texas is a really welcoming place and I would love for y'all to come and get to meet us at some point. Great question. I would say the opportunity. The opportunities are, are there for you for the next four years. So whether it's a, a, a class outside of your major, an opportunity to get involved maybe that you didn't in your previous uh, high school experience. Um, I always tell students and parents, you're paying good money to attend these schools. This is your opportunity to make the most of your investment and to get involved over these next four years. I know everybody says it, but as in high school, four years goes by very, very fast. For me and for Lawrence, I would say um, one big takeaway is that Lawrence offers a really unique combination of both a premier liberal arts college education and a conservatory of music education. Whether or not you're a musician, the fact that you know 
it's a it's a community that values passion and creativity and engagement and personalized education. Um, whether or not you're a musician, you're going to be a great fit. Uh, with Georgia Tech, I would really want you to remember our motto. It's progress and service, short and sweet, but it is our call to action. It's our challenge to students. You need to look at the world and the future with tenacity and hope and look to make things better and faster and stronger and more accessible. But service has to be there. You have to realize you're impacting people. You have to understand those people and also know whose voices aren't at the table and create space for them to be at the table. And so progress and service is how we feel like we're gonna go out and improve the human condition. And so just, just those two words is what I want you to hold on to. And I will say Wake Forest is so proud of um, the adjective we add in front of liberal arts. We call it the engaged liberal arts at Wake Forest. And so engagement can mean so many different things, whether that's service oriented or intellectual engagement or research engagement or engaging through travel and experiences. Um, I think there's uh, Wake Forest does an exceptional job of, of making the liberal arts um, engaging in so many different fora. All right, I will tell you, you got some really great nuggets of wisdom from the people on the screen. I'd like to thank them for their time today. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Now, when you close your window, there'll be a, a quick five question survey. We really wanna hear from you. We wanna get your feedback. We encourage you to, to ask more questions, to do the things that the representatives were talking about. And also, if you missed part of this or other sessions happening today, go back and let's look at some of the recordings. They'll be available um, in, on the StriveScan website at strivescan.com forward slash S-A-I-S. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.